Mustafa Hamid has joined us in the studio, and uh, Abuchi, I was saying that you were the youngest member of the National Executive in 2000, the history of the party in 2002 or so, uh, sitting down with President Kufo and others. How was it at that time? You had just come out of Kivas, hadn't you? Absolutely. And, um, uh, actually, I've been a participant in national politics right from 1991, when we founded the Dankwa Buzia Club. Even oh, you are a founding member? Of Dankwa Buzia Club, yes. In ah. Cape Coast with one lawyer, Spio, he's late, may his soul rest in peace. Mm -hmm. um, Rex Fafadogwe is also late. Um, Bafo. Um, this is Cape Coast? Yes, this is Cape Coast. Where you were at the time? I was, I was a first year student at the University of Cape Coast. Wow. And that's when um, former President Jerry Rawlings had just declared his intention to move into partisan politics but, in but why did you decide to join him? Why did, how did you know you should be MPP at that time? The, the MPP had never come. PNDC is what we had all known. Yeah. The 69 one was too early. Absolutely. The Dankwa one was even earlier. So how did you know at that time that I want to join these people? Well, I decided that I'll join the Dankwa Buzia Club mm -hmm. um, because, first of all, I didn't like anything to do with the Jerry Rawlings and his tradition. The coup and the gun. Yes, and, and all of that. Um, those who know my life story quite intimately. But I'll just say it on the surface. I mean, my father was a soldier. Mm -hmm. And then um, Jerry Rawlings and his people chased my father into exile in 1985. Oh, I see. Uh, so. Oh, so not, not naturally <laughs> you were on the other side. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah. and then, so we had Heritage Club. We had Eagle Club. Mm -hmm. We had Dankwa Buzia Club. They came and all put their notices on the Casford Hall notice board and said, students who are interested in joining any of this club. I just came and looked at the thing. And then I decided I'll do the Dankwa Buzia one because I want Jerry Rawlings and his tradition out, out of the place. So, so then you went to meetings? Come. Yeah, so went to meetings. 18th May 1992 mm -hmm. is when political party activity was formally lifted. That very night, I walked from Kisley Hayford Hall to the then Victoria Park, now it's called Jubilee Park, mm -hmm. in Cape Coast, for bonfire lighting to signal the formation of the NPP. I was standing by the bonfire. Who else was and there? And walked back to Cape Coast. I have a friend in Kumasi called um, Kwame Chem. Mm -hmm. When we got back to, because lawyers Pio and Co had said that they were going to come to, to campus with a bus to, take to you. pick us, mm -hmm. to then, for whatever reasons, the bus didn't show up. So um, all the students dispersed, went back to their dormitories, uh, their halls. But myself and Kwame Chem we were so determined that to we wanted to be part of this thing. So yeah. we started to trek from Kisley Hayford Hall all the way to Victoria Park. Wow. Went to be part of the bonfire night and trekked back to Kisley Hayford Hall. When we got back to Kisley Hayford Hall, it was 1.32 a.m. And then and you were happy with what you done. And we were excited. And I was excited. Wow. Thought that there's now a prospect for my father coming back. Yeah, yeah. To be fair to um, Jerry Rawlings, mm -hmm. in 1992, he actually made an announcement that all the exiled soldiers and so on could return to Ghana because we were now in a democratic mm -hmm. dispensation. But my father and a few of his friends said they didn't trust him, mm -hmm. even if he was a democratic president. So my father never returned until 2001 when MPP won. Oh, I see. To power. Yes, from 1985 to 2001, my father was out in exile. He only came when MPP came When back. MPP came back to power. Wow. So all along, I was fighting with the zeal that I wanted to get the PNDC and its antecedent party, the NDC, out of the place so my father can return. That was, frankly speaking, my own motivation for doing politics. So I thought, after my father returns, my work is done, and then mm. I can go back to other things. But as they yeah, say, the are. rest is history, and here I am. So, when did you then meet Nana Kufado, last one that we come to? Because <laughs> I know that's an interesting story, too. Okay. So, I, I, was, I became national youth organizer, as mm -hmm. you said. Mm -hmm. And then, as attorney general, he was entitled to attend a national executive committee meetings. So, he would come to national okay. executive committee meetings. But we never even spoke. I just finished. I go my way. I wasn't free with him. He, he wasn't my friend, let me put it that way. And then one day, after National Executive Committee meeting, he approached me and said, young man, come here. So I went. And he said, you are a brilliant young man. Um, can you see me in my house after, um, like tomorrow, the, the next day, after the Executive Committee? So I went to see him. 
And then, was he staying at that time? Um, near the Muslim cemetery, East Legon. East Legon. Mm -hmm. And then, but earlier on, let me go back a bit. Earlier on, Gabi Ochre Dakun, actually, is the first person to have introduced me to him. But it was very brief. Mm -hmm. When Gabi came to poach me, um, I was working with a newspaper called High Street Journal. Mm -hmm. And then Gabi came to poach me to come and work for the Statesman. Statesman. Yeah. So then he said, I think it's proper that you see the founder of the Statesman newspaper. So one day he took me to his house and then said, oh, I have a new editor. But that interaction was very brief. Mm -hmm. And after that, that was it. I was okay. just doing my work at Statesman. Mm -hmm. Until this, I became national youth organizer. And then after the National Executive Committee meeting, he said to me that I should see him the next day. Mm -hmm. So when I went to see him, you know, and then he said, I like you, you are brilliant. I like your articulation and so on and so forth. Let me be candid with you. I want to be president of the Republic of Ghana. Oh, I he told you? Yes. In 2000, oh, and this was in 2004, 2000, and just ab around December 2004, entering into 2005. Oh, I see. So he said, I would run since Kufo is doing his second term yeah. and it's, it's going. I'm going to run. And I need young men like you to be in my corner. Oh, wow. This is an interesting yeah. story. <laughs> Under normal story. circumstances, I would have said to him... Uh, this you were the National Youth Organizer. And I was National Youth Organizer. Mm -hmm. I was National Youth Organizer. Mm -hmm. So he said, I want you to help me. So, under normal circumstances, I would have said to him, let me go home and think about it. But I didn't say anything of that. Mm -hmm. I, there, I said, I'm with you. I'm going to follow you. We'll work. Wow. And then he shook my hands and said, we have a pact. Oh, I see. <laughs> and, then, and that has been it. Uh, yes. And then after that, Mr. Victor Newman and co. This was then later. In, this was in May 2005. Mr. Victor Newman, mm -hmm. Carlos Von Brazi, mm -hmm. Nietzsche, Eddie Dacu, mm -hmm. all team, of these yeah. founded FONA. Oh, yes, yes, FONA, FONA. Uh -huh. Friends of Nana Akufu. Akufu yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, then we started FONA. and then, Fakabu. Yes. And then we were meeting. But the group that was meeting in Nietzsche, Eddie Dacu's house every Monday, you know, was just me, Nana Kufuado himself, if he was in town. Uh, of course, Nietzsche Edi Dakun, Gabi Ochre Dakun, uh, Victor Newman himself. And then I think once a while, uh, Bedi Etuo will show up mm -hmm. and so on. And then, of course, Ken Ufuriata would also show up once in a while. And then there was Yao Amfo Kwachi. Oh, yes, he died. Yes. Yeah. And then we'll meet in Nietzsche's house. I think we used to call it number 10. It's in somewhere, Kanda place. yes, Kanda Place, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and then we will meet there every Monday from 2005 all the way to 2007 when we, we now, we're now um, official. Uh, official and then we, we, we rented that, those offices uh, behind, down. no, first behind uh, Odor Rice. Yeah, that's Asalam Down. Okay, it's Asalam yeah. Down, okay, so somewhere behind Odor Rice and then we had the, some circle, yes, yeah. and then we had, um, we, we, we started running the FONA project from I there. See. And then I would go around with him. Um, first of all, I went around the whole country, me, Nietzsche, Eddie Dako, and Amfo Kwachi, first round the three of you. to delegates. Yes, the three of us. And then I would do most of the talking. This is ahead of 2007. Yes, mm -hmm. at, at head of the primaries. And then yeah, Amfo Kwachi would come and talk about him because he was his personal assistant and cousin as mm -hmm. well. And Yao Kwachi yeah, would talk about his passing and who he is and etc etc then later on when he resigned and joined you know um it was just basically me and him and and i'll talk 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 and then hand over the mic to him and then he will talk and then we'll move to the next constituency then oh, later so by then you have started doing the spokesperson yes yes so i've yeah. been his spokesperson officially announced as spokesperson from 2007. oh i see exactly so that's what happened all then, the way to 2017 and then all the way to 2017 then later abu jinapo him to join yeah, yeah, yeah. also. It's a special aid, yeah. Yes, yeah. and then in the last round of campaigning, so Abu Jinapur would talk, give me the mic, then I would talk and then hand over to him, introduce him and hand over to him. And then that's how we won the primaries of 2007. And as they say, the rest is history. Is that why, this is the last one, is that why the story came out in uh, 2021, uh, February? I was somewhere they were talking and they said, ah, what happened? They said, Charlie, the president has changed his mind. And they said, ah, what, 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 what? I said, ah. Apparently, the president has promised MPA to somebody during the campaign. And then there's a very strong promise. And then the, the president called the somebody and said, Chief, I beg you, somebody that I have a pact with has asked for this thing. So I can't. I have promised you, but it is gone. Because this man, so quickly, we all started, ah, who is everybody on the phone? Ah, who is everybody was asking. But I hear that's what the president said. Now your story makes it whole. 
He told the person that I, I, I wanted to take you there, but somebody that is equally competent and I have a pact with him, yeah. he has asked for it. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. So that, was, that absolutely. that's a very close relationship. Absolutely. <laughs>